Okay, let's start another example on simple rotations in motion genesis. All right, so let's start with rigid frame N. That'll be the Newtonian reference frame. Uh, and then I also defined four other ref reference frames, A, B, C, and D. And they're all going to be basically the exact same thing. That means the rotation between A and N, B and N, C and N, D and N will all be the same. I'm just going to get to it four different ways. All right, I've got a variable Q. That'll be the angle of rotation. So the first one here is A rotate Z. So I'm going to rotate A about the Z axis relative to N and amount Q. Let's see what happens. All right, it spits out the rotation matrix A to N, cosine, sine, zero, minus sine, cosine, et cetera, et cetera, which is just like we expect. All right, let's go to the, the paper here, and we'll see that this rotation matrix is indeed uh, the same as the rotation matrix that uh, motion genesis spit out with the sines and minus sines, et cetera, et cetera. And so one way to remember this thing, uh, R, this rotation matrix, A and N matches the A and N over here. Uh, if you stick an R in there, it looked like A, R, N, which matches the upper right-hand corner here, A, R, N. So that's the way I like to remember, um, you know, whether the whether it's transposed or not transposed. All right, so let's look at how visually how this works. So, so a, N, X, and Y are stationary. A, the, the red vectors, A, X, and A, Y, are the coordinate system that's rotating. And so I'm going to start with my hand, the N, X, and I'm going to sweep it in the direction of positive increasing Q, and my thumb's going to point in the direction along the axis of rotation, which in this case is out of the paper, which is the ZX, A, A, Z, and NZ. So I'm sweeping my hand counterclockwise, and my thumb points in the right direction. So again, AX is the one that's moving relative to NX, and that's why I kind of sweep in that that uh, that counterclockwise direction, because I'm sweeping AX in the direction of increasing Q. All right, my thumb points in the positive Z, A, Z, N, Z. Okay, let's do a second rotation here, and I'm going to do it a little bit differently. It's going to seem backwards here. I'm going to rotate N about the negative Z um, relative to B, this is another reference frame, and amount Q. And so this is going to give me the exact same thing. It doesn't look quite the same because it's cosine, cosine, weight, minus sign. But remember, it's a transpose. BN is a transpose of NB. So if I actually ask for... Uh, B underscore N, it'll give me the exact same rotation matrix as we had before. It's just a transpose of NB. So cosine, cosine, sine, minus sine, cosine, cosine, etc. And so that's exactly, so A to N and B to N are exact same rotation matrices. So let's go back to the uh, paper here. Okay, so we're going to come over here back to the uh, paper here, and we have the rotation matrix NRB, uh, and that's the one that matches the uh, rotation matrix that um, Motion Genesis spit out, and it's the transpose of uh, the previous one with between A and N. All right, so I got uh, the vectors here in this case, BX and BY, the, the red vectors, are the one that are stationary because N is rotating relative to B. And so uh, NX and NY are the ones rotating, and increasing Q means that NX and NY are going to be rotating in a clockwise fashion relative to B. So I put my hand in the BX direction, and I'm going to sweep my fingers in the direction of increasing Q, uh, and then my thumb points into the paper. So again, increasing Q, NX is swinging around clockwise, and my thumb points into the paper. And that's why it's the negative Z. So N rotates in the negative Z direction relative to B. Okay, one more here, a third one. This one's a little more confusing, so let's do this one. Um, I'm going to rotate uh, N. I'm going to rotate uh, a positive Z in this case um, relative to this third reference frame, uh, C. But I'm going to do it a negative Q, an amount negative Q. And that's, this one's kind of hard to see. Um, what you'll see is the reference, there's a, there it is, and it's the same as before. In fact, if I ask for C to N, um, it will give me the exact same thing as we had between A and N and B and N, basically, uh, with the cosine sine, negative sine, uh, and then cosine. All right, so let's go back to the paper here. Okay, so I have these two examples. I have the top one here. I'm going to do the bottom one first. And so I have the rotation matrix C to N, which is what was spit out in, um, in Motion Genesis, and we'll see that it matches. Now, CX and CY are stationary. Remember, this was N is rotated relative to C. And so CX, CY are stationary. So NX, NY rotating. Um, and now, because I said minus Q, I have to sweep my fingers in the, in the direction of decreasing Q. So I'm going to take CX, CY, and I'll rotate my fingers in the direction that decreases Q, because it's a minus rotation. Um, and my thumb points in the positive Z when that happens. So CX, rotate my fingers in the direction of a decreasing Q because I said I rotate in the minus Q, minus, the amount minus Q. Um, and you see that my, that it's a, again, it's a counterclockwise rotation when my thumb points out of the board. So it's a C, N rotates relative to C, a, a positive Z, uh, but a minus Q. Now, here's another way of looking at it. 
If I actually were to draw the angle minus Q on here, it looks something like this. And this would make more sense. Now I'm going to rotate my hand in the direction of, of increasing a negative Q rotation. And again, my thumb points in the positive Z direction. So CX rotates the negative Q, increase negative Q, uh, and my thumb points in the positive Z. And so N rotates relative to C, uh, about the positive Z, and amount negative Q. Fourth case, just to confuse everybody thoroughly, I'm going to rotate D about the negative Z axis relative to N. Again, it's going to be a negative Z, a negative Q. So this is kind of a double negative. Let's see what happens here. And dear D to N, you can see it's the exact same one we had before. Uh, remember, the D is rotating relative to N. So I'm going to rotate uh, the red arrow, the red vectors, relative to NX and Y. So I'm going to put my hands along, along the N, and I'm going to sweep my fingers in the direction of a decreasing Q. So it means DX, DY is rotating in a clockwise fashion. My thumb's going to be into the paper, and as I curl my fingers in a, in a clockwise direction, that'll cause that Q to decrease. So I'm rotating a negative Q, which means I'm decreasing Q, and the axis, my thumb, is pointing into the paper, which is negative Z. So, so it's a negative Z rotation, about the negative Z axis, and it's in the direction of a negative Q. Now, here's again, here's the second way of looking at this. I'll look at it and I'll say, okay, let's actually draw a negative Q. Now I'm going to draw my, and I'll curl my fingers in the direction of negative Q increasing because it's a negative Q rotation. So again, my thumb is pointing into the paper, NX, sweep my fingers in the direction that increases that negative Q, and that's a clockwise fashion. All right, my thumb points into the board, decreasing negative Q, um, points in, into the paper. My thumb points into the paper in a negative Z. So it's a negative Z rotation at a mountain negative Q. So I forgot to mention it on the last slide, um, but I can draw, redraw that rotation matrix using the negative Q, just like this picture that is shown here. If I redid, redid the, uh, the, uh, the rotation matrix with the, the angle minus Q, uh, it looked just like this, where, where we're used to setting this up. Um, where if this angle was you know, theta, we, we'd end up with uh, this rotation matrix. Okay, so I got a cosine of negative Q, though, ends up being, um, because it's negative, ends up being cosine of Q, because that's, that's an even function. And sine of negative Q, of course, becomes negative sine Q. And so you end up getting the exact same rotation matrix when you actually factor that out with the minus Qs using the, those trigonometric, trigonometric identities. And uh, that's the interesting way. So four ways of doing it. Um, they all end up with the exact same rotation matrix. And of course, the, the, uh, the easiest way is to use just the A rotate Z, which gives us the normal one we're used to seeing. Again, that's the one I normally like to use, but I wanted to show the other three just in case, just so you get a familiarity with uh, how that command actually works.